Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We have a jam-packed show on this 1st of July, 2014. You know, we're coming up to the 4th of July this weekend. And I just saw a story on the BBC. Internet billionaire Nick Hanauer warns of a coming revolution. That's right. It wasn't just 1776. It's going to be coming again. The question is... Will it be a peaceful or a violent revolution? Will it be a revolution that results in more individual freedom or in an authoritarian police state? Now, he had some interesting things to say. We're going to talk about that. He says that uh, if they don't fix some of the problems, the pitchforks are going to come out. They certainly are. I don't necessarily agree with his solution, but we're going to talk about that. And, of course, we're going to also have in this edition today, we're going to be talking to author Peter Van Buren. Now, he's not only an author of a couple of books, uh, he was somebody who worked at the State Department for a couple of decades. And so we want to talk to him about his book, uh, which is The Ghost of Tom Joad, the story of the 99%. Uh, you may remember that name, Tom Joad. That's the main character from The Grapes of Wrath. If you remember the movie, that was a character that was played by Henry Fonda. And so he kind of brings that into a more contemporary setting. Instead of it being set in the Depression, it's set in middle America, going into the, from the 1950s to the current day. Instead of the rust, uh, instead of the Dust Bowl, we've got the Rust Belt that uh, he's talking about. So that's going to be an interesting interview because he spent a lot of time in Iraq and it was just Sunday that the New York Times, specifically James Risen, started talking about how black water guards in the embassy there in Iraq were essentially doing whatever they wished and even threatening State Department investigators, threatening to kill them, saying, this is Iraq, I can kill you uh, if I want to and no one could or would do anything about it. We're in Iraq. That was what the uh, Blackwater people there told the State Department investigators. And shortly after that, we had that massacre of 17 civilians, including a nine-year-old boy in a public square. Uh, they're now being investigated for murder. But it, it, uh, I want to talk to him about what happened and what, uh, what he saw there in Iraq. So that's going to be a very interesting interview. we got Paul Joseph Watson joining us at the bottom of this hour. He's going to be talking about the new revelation from the mainstream media. We've been telling you about it for a long time, but I guess you can believe it now because Charlie Rose says so. <laughs> it's kind of like the old Get Smart series, you know, where he says, uh, would you believe? Uh, it's not that we're lying. That's what he was doing when he was doing it. It's that uh, people won't believe us unless it's coming from CBS or PBS or NBC or some other mainstream media. Well, now they're openly talking about how they're using LED lights to monitor people. Yeah, it's no longer a tinfoil hat issue, and it never was. We knew the technology was there, just as we knew that people were looking at you through your laptops. People laughed at Alex Jones for a long time about saying that they were spying on us. Now it's common knowledge, and many people are just pushing back and saying, so what? Well, we're going to talk about the implications of that with uh, Paul Joseph Watson. He has a story up. He also has a story up about how people... Get used to living in slavery. That's an amazing story. So we're going to go over that article from Paul Joseph Watson. We have another story here. Police arrest a paraplegic man for considering himself to be a pedestrian. And it's not just that they arrested him. They threw him out of his wheelchair face on the ground when he refused to stand up. See, the problem is he's in a wheelchair, as he explained to them, because he is paralyzed from the chest down. And so that's what we see happening here. We've also got some updates on this uh, Tea Party defeat in Mississippi. We now have a Mississippi Democrat Party officials who are admitting that the Cochran team wanted help in stealing the election. Stay with us. We're going to be right back. We're going to have reports from Alex Jones on Agenda 21 as well. So stay with us. It's going to be an exciting program.
Man, when I get home from work, all Betty does is watch her reality TV and then she goes to sleep. I can take her on romantic dates, I get her flowers, you name it. She's just not the woman I married. Oh, Ralph, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? Are the honeymoon days of your relationship long gone? If so, consider this. The abundance of chemical additives, pesticides, BPA containers, contaminated tap water, and other toxic substances found in our environment. Experts know our bodies are suffering and being thrown off balance, especially when it comes to your natural systems. Forget synthetic chemicals. Super Female Vitality brings forward key herbs specifically chosen for women's biology without the use of phony additives. Get your bottle of Super Female Vitality today at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or call 1-888-253-3139. InfoWarsLife.com. Live life healthy. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Security alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. We let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. A popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at infowars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out. Intellectually, it's begun and you can feel it. Rallying patriots worldwide in defense of human liberty, it's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this July 1st, 2014. Now, tomorrow is July the 2nd, and you know, one of the ways that you might want to celebrate the 4th of July weekend is go check out a new movie from Dinesh D'Souza. He's been a guest on the Alex Jones Show talking about this movie, talking about how he's being persecuted by the Obama administration because, you know, they do come after anyone who they don't like. Think about the Espionage Act of 1917. For 92 years, it was used three times from Presidents Woodrow Wilson all the way up to Obama. Then within five years, he's used it six times, mostly against journalists. I was just talking before the break about that story that was broken by the New York Times Sunday by James Risen talking about how Blackwater felt that they were free to threaten any State Department investigators, said, I can kill you and there's nothing that anyone could or would do about it because this is Iraq. This is the attitude of Blackwater. And that was just a couple of weeks before the massacre of 17 civilians. We're going to be talking to Peter Van Buren, a State Department official who worked for them for a couple of decades, and he was there shortly before that time. So I want to get his uh, feeling on what's going on in Iraq right now. What was it like to be in that kind of a work environment uh, there at the embassy in Baghdad? And, of course, when he started writing about the failed policies of the State Department, they attacked him, just like they did Dinesh D'Souza. They came after him initially because he linked 
to something that was put up at WikiLeaks. He didn't leak information, he linked to it. And many people believe that that was a trial balloon for what they would later to do, later do to journalist Barrett Browning. So this is uh, an important trend that we see. Of course, they're coming after Dinesh D'Souza. They will find anything that they can come after somebody about, whether it's using the IRS or the FEC, uh, or whether or not they're going to uh, claim that it's national security coming after someone. But Dinesh D'Souza's movie is coming out tomorrow. And there's an article by Jerome Corsi, another frequent guest here of Alex's on the radio show, saying that the left is coming out screaming against his movie before it comes out. They want to uh, give it a lot of attention because his previous movie was the second most popular political documentary of all time, earning $33 million. So they want to shoot this down before it comes out. As Corsi says, the political left is coming out screaming and with guns blazing in an attempt to dampen the audience for the highly anticipated film, America. This is what one of the guys said. This guy's name is uh, Romero. He writes for the da Romano. Sorry, he writes for the Daily Beast, and he said uh, D'Souza is a conservative provocateur. And Romano said that he lacked the space to dispute every specious point that D'Souza makes in America, or to highlight every bit of nonsensical sophistry he employs in order to mask the emptiness of his so-called reasoning. Well, there you go. You know, he says he's just throwing factoids against the wall. But he doesn't have the time to address those factoids. So he just doesn't have the space to refute it. So he just calls him uh, names. <laughs> just says his arguments are just uh, specious and I don't, I don't have room to refute them. He doesn't even try to address them. He calls them factoids instead of facts. See, it's the language that they use. They always come at you with the language. I thought there was an interesting link on uh, Drudge today, uh, the language of despotism. This came out of the Hoover Institute. And one of the things this article says, they, they go back, they say it's not just Orwell in 1984. They said uh, there was a, a Greek writer who said uh, that words have to change their ordinary meaning and to take that which was now given them in order to control people. Orwell went on to say politics in the English language. He said, political speech and writing are largely the defense of the indefensible. And they give a couple of examples in this article. They talk about how we've had the term affirmative action. Uh, that's been replaced with race-sensitive admissions. And he says, but affirmative action was itself a euphemism for racial quotas in the use of college admissions until they were struck down by the Supreme Court case, uh, 1978, Bakke. To salvage racial discrimination, which any process gives race an advantage necessarily requires, Bakke legitimized yet another euphemism, diversity, after a compelling state interest that had justified taking race into account in the university admissions. So they use those terms and we now here's here's a question for you oh one more example he's got here before i get to that in 2009 of course there were 13 people killed at fort hood by a muslim army major and that's still classified as quote workplace violence workplace violence now here's a pop quiz what other term do you hear in the news every day that is propaganda time's up undocumented immigrants Undocumented immigrants. See, the illegal aliens are not illegal, and they're not from another country. They're immigrants. They're now living here, and they just don't have their documentation yet. But, of course, the city of New York and other places are going to offer them $5 million to defend them, to provide documentation for them. Everything from library cards to every other form of ID. And I'm sure they'll find a way to get them in as voters because... This is one of the things that this collapse of the border is about, is a massive gerrymandering on steroids. Because, you know, always with gerrymandering, they've made a fine art of going into a, a state and creating the districts where they go in and look at the demographics on the computer and pick voter by voter. I remember when I lived in North Carolina, they had uh, one district that was jumping across the street back and forth to try to get uh, the political party that they wanted. I think at that time it was the Democrats. Of course, both of the political parties do that. Now, instead of using computers to pick which voters you want in which districts, they're just going to import the vo voters into the areas that they want, you know, bring them into 